was on page 987 in your book, and says, in the month of June, Barbara's Beauty Salon gave 2,700 haircuts, shampoos, and ornaments. I don't think that's each. I think that's in total. What do you think? Yes. At an average price of $30. During the first month, fixed cost, excuse me, there's not a word first there. During the month, fixed costs were $18,000. Variable costs were 70% of sales. I'm sorry that I didn't get as far in the 130 lecture as I did at 850. Is there somebody in the room right this minute from the 850 class that could tell me the contribution margin ratio? Raise your hand. Normally at this point, if I had covered it in both lectures, I'd be asking the whole class. Who can tell me the contribution margin ratio? and get a whole bunch of people to raise their hands, or uh, not very many people to raise their hands, and then I could scold you for not a, applying what I taught you in Monday's lecture. But it's my fault, because I didn't get to teach you, so I don't know who's in the 815, who's in the 130, just do that. Who's in the 850 lecture? Let me see. Come on, nobody wants to confess. <laughs> nobody wants to confess. You know. With? Do you know the contribution margin ratio from what I read? Uh, <coughs> I believe it's 18,000. I, I believe I'll just forget it. And I'll just move on and I'll teach this lesson today appropriately. It's not your fault. It's my fault. But I'll make up for it. Let's read on. <coughs> Instructions. A. Determine the contribution margin in dollars. Determine the contribution margin per unit. And determine the contribution margin as a ratio. Now. Had I finished the lesson Monday and not be in this little pickle that I've created for myself, I'd start with contribution margin ratio right this minute because it's that easy, but not for us because we haven't heard the lesson yet. A, determine the contribution margin in dollars. There are several ways we could do this. This directly connects to last week to the contribution, uh, to the uh, variable costing income statement that we should know and be proficient in right this minute. And lots of people in this room should be able to tell me how to do this. I'm looking for one person who would lead me. Help me find contribution margin in dollars. Jeff? Now, first we need sales. We did. Which is uh, 2,700 hair changes. 2,700 times 30. an average price of $30 a piece is... $81,000 of revenue earned. Anything else, Jeff? And then, uh, when you get the real cost from that? And they were? 70%. 70% of what? 81000 70% of sales. 70% of 81000 is? 56700 56700 I could sure use an auditor about now. That's right. Which is, Jeff, then you subtract that from 81,000. Sales minus variable cost and variable expenses is called contribution margin. That's what they ask us to find. You got $24,300. $24,300. Is he right, class? Are you with me, yes or no? Mm -hmm. That's hard to do, but pretend we didn't just do that. Pretend I just announced the exercise. Pretend I just read this question that said, let's find contribution margin. Help me find contribution margin in dollars. Or what I'm asking you to do is actually the answer to the second question. What is contribution margin per unit? You could lead me through that. Anybody but Jeff. This is a bit of a surprise. I figured five people minimum could volunteer do this. Contribution margin per unit? Okay, I'll go back to my original question then. Pretend we didn't hear Jeff say this. 
What I want to know right this minute is the answer to the first or second question in the sentence. Find me contribution margin in dollars, find me contribution margin per unit, pretend we didn't just solve one of those. Tucker, can you help me? So, um, you're going to find it in units, so it says 2,700 <coughs> units. You yeah, use? but that sounds like the way Jeff did it. That's oh, okay. exactly what, how Jeff started. And the second question here is per unit. What do we sell one unit for, Tucker? For um, $30. $30. What does one unit cost us in variable costs, Tucker? It costs us 70%. 70% of $30 is? 100. In your head, Tucker? Um, 20? 20 One. 21. <laughs> $21 of variable cost subtracted from $30 of sales, Tucker. Is nine. Is nine dollars per unit. That? Nine dollars per unit. That's nine dollars contribution margin per unit. That's the answer to the second question in the problem. But it is also one approach to getting the answer to the first question in the problem, which was what is contribution margin in dollars? This is per unit. Could I convert that to total contribution margin, Tucker? Yeah, you'd multiply that 9 by the total amount of units, 2,700. 9 times 2,700 2, units. I just got a feeling that that's going to be $24,300, isn't it, everybody? Everybody? Yeah, I don't want you to make this so hard. I want this to be so easy, obvious, apparent, confidence building that you're sailing out of here because you understood what was going on today. Is it today's homework problem that right off they didn't give you the percentage of variable costs and you had to find them? Was that today's problem? I knew one of them this week was that way and I didn't know which one it was. Tell me the formula for determining the percent of variable cost. If this is all we knew, if we didn't have the information given in the problem, if we had this income statement, how would we find the percent of variable cost? Toby, was your hand up? Um, was that a reflex scratch in your nose? What? Yeah, well. But it didn't say pick in your nose. I have a question. Oh. So, so the only number we know is the sales and contribution margin? The only thing we have is an income statement. And the question is, what is the variable percentage? So you divide. Um, 56, by 81. Variable costs divided by sales? Yeah. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Yeah. If we wanted to say it like a formula, if we wanted to know the variable percentage, we'd divide variable cost by sales. You know, I've used this illustration too many times already, but it's still appropriate. One of the things that people in industry criticize us in the academic community about is writing questions and giving you all the information you need and you get hired and sit in your cubicle and just expect somebody to come around every hour or so and serve you up some different numbers. No, in real life we gotta figure out our own numbers. Right, Toby? Mm -hmm. So one approach this problem could have taken is, here's an income statement, what's the percent of variable cost? What'd you get, Toby? 70%. If you divide 56.7 by 81,000, you get the 70%, of course, because we forced it into that. We used information in the problem. But I'm saying if the timeline had been different, if we had this instead of this written out problem. Now, if variable costs are 70%, what is contribution margin as a percent? Nick. Nice hat, Nick. No, 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 that seemed like a rebuke. I guess it was, but I meant it differently. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the color of your shirt. 
Don't take off your shirt. Am I serious, Brandy? What's going on here? You're contemplating complimenting people, and I have no idea what's going on. I am complimenting people. Thank you. Spell it. What? C O M P L E? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Start over. C O M P L I N E N T. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> You're with me or not? What was that? A compliment. A compliment. Nick, what is the contribution margin ratio? Cost no, that'd be the percent of variable cost. <coughs> Literally, Nick, in this problem, you've answered this question correctly for me. What is the contrib contribution margin ratio in this problem? You told me a minute ago what the number was. 30. 30%. 30 How'd you get the 30%? It's the difference between 70 and 100. Is there a name for that, mathematically speaking? Yeah, go to him. <laughs> Shane says, I'm sorry, Nick says that the contribution margin ratio is 30%. I asked him how he got it. He said he subtracted, what did you say? 70% uh, from 100. 70% from 100 is 30%. What's the name of the 30% Nick wants to know, Shane? He said with confidence? <laughs> Somebody over here with a male voice said it correctly. Was it you, Jeff? Yeah. What's the name of this 30%? Compliment. Spell it. C O N T I N E N T. <laughs> Is incorrect. Spell it. C O N T L E N E N T. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. I complimented your compliment. <laughs> Oh, I got you with one person. <laughs> it was, that was better than my paycheck this Friday. <laughs> the complement, mathematically speaking, is the rest of the fraction. What's the complement of one-fourth, everybody said? Three-fourths. What's the complement of two-thirds? What's the complement of 90%? What's the complement of variable cost? Contribution margin. Contribution margin. Contribution margin. Sales is the whole thing. Sales is the pie. Variable costs are a big slice of the pie, and contribution margin is the rest of the pie. Are you with me or not? Say yes or no. Yes. Now, the question I asked originally that you were incapable of answering, you are capable of answering right this minute. Pretend we haven't read this exercise. Read it with me. In the month of June, Barbara's Beauty Salon gave 2,700 haircuts, shampoos, and permanents at an average price of $30. During the month, fixed costs were, uh, were $18,000 and variable costs were 70% of sales. Raise your hand if you know the comp contribution margin ratio. Why didn't everybody raise their hand? Are y'all not in the same room I'm in? When the book says variable costs are 70 percent of sales you can immediately know the contribution margin ratio say it it's the complement are we in one accord or not so we could have approached this exercise in any of these three ways we could have known this first and done it all we could have known this first and done it all we did as a matter of fact it is more likely that we would know this first and figure out the other stuff. A. Determine the contribution margin in dollars. We did. Per unit, we did. And as a ratio, we did. B starts out with some instructions that I don't appreciate. A little too bossy, a little too, I'd rather do this my own way, don't tell me how to do it. So I'm going to skip that first opening phrase down through the comma and start Compute the break-even point in dollars and in units. I want to know who, if I called on you right this minute, without looking back in your book or notes, 
could say the break-even formula for me. Put your hand above your head. I am ready to say the break-even formula. Hands up. Come on. Put them down. I'm looking for two volunteers. Say it, with Sales equals finish, or excuse me, fixed costs plus variable costs. Excellent. Who's my second volunteer going to say this for me? Nick? Sales equals fixed costs plus variable costs. That's all saying. The break-even formula is sales equals fixed costs plus variable costs, where sales is the unknown, fixed costs are fixed, and variable costs are stated in a percentage relationship to sales. It's a point of equilibrium where revenue earned is exactly equal to expenses and cost incurred, where net income is exactly zero. I'm appealing to the four or five of you who didn't raise your hand. Of all the concepts we've taught all year long, this one may be the most apparent, in my opinion. The equilibrium described with the definition and with the formula are the same and attainable. You can do this. I want to know the break-even point in dollars. So let's take this formula and plug in what we know. Sales are, Alexis. Didn't hear you. Oh, sales are unknown. <coughs> Which is it? Sales are unknown. I so regretted saying the formula a while ago when I said the whole formula and I said, oh, I so regretted that. But I'm so thankful that I got you to say 81,000 even if it was only for a fleeting moment. We don't know sales. Do we know fixed cost, Alexis? Yes. They're stated in the problem. The 70% are variable costs. The fixed costs are given in the problem. Can you find me the number real quick? Um, $18,000. And variable costs we've established because the book said so, but because we also worked it out to be 70% of S. Now, I could have perhaps tricked somebody into saying variable costs were $56,700 that we determined, but that is true at the level 81,000. <coughs> I'm assuming we make a profit at 81,000 of sales. I'm looking for the point at which we don't make a profit. If the level of sales varies, so does the level of variable cost vary. That's how they get their name. Was your hand up? No, I was trying to answer. Okay. How about one time, let's be deliberate like we were in Monday's lecture, and then we'll start taking shortcuts galore, getting there faster. Shane's and my algebra teacher said the first step in solving this was? I select the variable. I select the variable. How are we going to do that, Tucker? Subtract. 0.7s from both sides. And when we subtract 0.7s from the right side, what do I have left on the right side? You're looking at the left side, be careful. 18,000 on the right 18, side. 18,000 on the right side. And when I subtract 70% s from the left side, how's it going to look? 0.3s. Yeah, that's on the next line, though. How's it going to uh, look on this line? Um, what? S oh. minus 70% s. Oh, okay. This is the isolate the variable step. Right, Tucker? Second step, algebraically speaking, Shane and my algebra teacher said, come on like terms. Apparently, somebody else's algebra teacher said that too. Who's did? Just let me see. Who heard the expression come on like terms before yesterday in lecture? I thought so. So who's going to tell me how to do this second line? Hurry up. With? S minus 0.7s equals 0.3s. Good. On the left side, right, and on the right side we have 18, just the same old eighteen thousand that we had. Now tell me, class, what's the name of this? What's his last name? What's his first name? This is the contribution margin ratio. Yes or not? Yeah. Refresh my memory about what this is. What's this? Fixed cost. Okay. Now hang with me here. Third step of algebra is everybody that knows said. Solve. I need one volunteer to describe it for me. Jeff? 5.3 from both sides. 
divide both sides by 0.3, is that what you just said? And on the left side, when you divide by 0.3, you get S. S. And on the right side, when you divide by 0.3, you get 60, the break-even point of $60,000. Now, if you just said the other, I'd have said the other. Okay. 60000 is the break-even point. If we did an mm -hmm. income statement right this minute, right after the good heading started with sales of 60000 reduced it by 70% of variable cost and 18000 18, of fixed cost, we would have net income of, everybody said? I heard the wrong answer. Zero. zero. Net income at the break-even point is zero. <coughs> Somebody's hand was up. Brandy, was it yours? Please. The 70% uh, times S, is that actual? Is S actual? No. It's an unknown. No, and this one over here? Yes. That's an unknown. If it were actual, we'd have plugged in the 56.7. Is that what your temptation is? Is that what you're talking about? I addressed that. You weren't ready for it? It's okay. You apparently are ready for it now. No. 56.7 is what variable costs are when sales are 81000 That's true, actual in your terms. But if I'm going to say I don't know sales, then I don't know variable cost because they're tied to sales. Did I answer your question? Now, class, I want to show you an alternative, an alternative way of doing this. Some of you are going to really like it. I, I just want to tell you a quick history that when I took this course eons ago, this is the way I saw it presented the first time. This equilibrium made sense. The word description and the formula were the same. It, conceptually, I understood it. But in the next course that I took where this was introduced, the authors said the formula for determining the break-even point is sales are equal to fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. I didn't see any grapes on a coffee table. I didn't see any equilibrium going on. That made absolutely no sense at all to me. I have to confess, I memorized it to get through the test and forgot it. And lo and behold, enrolled in another class in another publisher's textbook. And when we got to the break-even chapter, the author said in the chapter, the formula for determining break-even is sales equals fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio, which made absolutely no sense to me, so I memorized it to survive. Now, <coughs> one of those days from that point until 20 years ago when I finally figured this out, it dawned on me that to get from here to here, that's exactly what we're doing. It's the third step of algebra. If you want to show all your work and start with this formula that makes better sense conceptually, like it does to me, then do it that way. If you understand that this is just the third step, I ask you these questions already. I repeat them. This was 70%. It became 30%. What's the name of this? That's why I wanted you to know the contribution margin ratio so quickly. So reflex reaction. This is contribution margin ratio. What's this? How do you get from here to here? You divide fixed cost by the contribution margin ratio. This will give you the break-even point in dollars, just like this one will. Leave out two steps of algebra if you want to. It's okay with me, if you understand. The problem says, Calculate the break-even point in units. If we know this, and one more thing, we can do this. What do I have to do to convert this break-even point in dollars to break-even point in units? If you know, raise your hand and talk to me, please. Shane, what do I have to know? The sales price. If I know the unit sales price, I can do it. Tell me how. 
uh, break even dollar amount by the sales price. Is correct. Divide break even point in dollars by the unit sales price, and you get the break even point in units. It's not the next thing on my slide. Can you do that for me? $60,000 divided by each haircut sells for $30. $60,000 divided by $30 is 2,000 haircuts, shampoos, and permanents would allow us to break even. Yes, class? Is he right? 2,000 is the answer. 2,000 things. Now, if you liked this shortcut, and I saw a lot of people affirming with me with nodded heads that they did, you might like this shortcut. Remember, this one gives you break even in dollars. If you want to know the break even point in units, then perhaps you would like to divide fixed cost by the unit contribution margin. This one is in units. So this has to have something in units. If you divide, if you work this out, you get break even in units. Let's try it. We don't know sales. That's the unknown for which we're attempting to solve. Do we know fixed cost? Say it. 18,000. 18,000. Do we know contribution margin per unit? Yes. Say it. Divide 18,000 in fixed cost <coughs> by $9 a unit. Tell me what you got. You're mumbling. 2, the same 2,000 units that we got a minute ago when we did it in the air. Who likes that formula? Hands up. Good. It doesn't hurt you to know it. I just don't want to come across this week as, here's another formula. Oh, let's learn this formula. Oh, let's learn this one too. And wind up with 100 formulas at the end of the week that you have to memorize. I want you to experience them with me. I want you to see how logical and helpful they are and just remember them just know them if you've got a question about anything that's happened i would try to answer it the problem says compute the margin of safety in dollars and as a ratio i'm asking for a volunteer first before we do this to describe the margin of safety for me in words what is the margin of safety? Tucker? The amount of net income you have over the break point. That is a good answer. <coughs> There's only one slight thing I need to pick at you about to improve it and make it a great answer, okay? And I'm going to see if somebody else can say it, and I'll show you that mistake in just a second. Yeah. What's the margin um, of safety? In, in your thoughts, conceptually speaking, what do you think of when you think of the margin of safety? Describe it to me. Um, Alexis, you volunteer? Yes. Sort of the same formula, sales equals fixed cost plus variable cost plus um, target. That is not it, and I'm not asking okay. for a formula. I'm asking for a description, some explanation from your understanding about um, what, what we're describing here, a description, Brandy. Use, um, the most profit you can make in uh, Has merit but it has also the same problem that Tucker has. But I'm going to get to address that. Now, Louise, is your hand up? Yeah. What's the margin of safety? Isn't it? Like, That's a question. Is the third class of like the amount that you have that is more than you are free? Yes. I think that's the best answer. Not that I'm comparing, but that was a really good answer. Jeff, your hand was up. I was going to say the amount of sales over the break even. That is correct. There are lots of ways you can say this and get a right answer. I wanted you to think about it and try to formulate it and say it, articulate it. It'd be good for you. It's the cushion we enjoy. It's the amount by which sales can decline before we incur a loss. It's the abundance. It's the over and above. But it's all top line, sales oriented, not bottom line, net income, Tucker, or profit, Randy, oriented. It's a break-even concept. Break-even's a top-line sales concept before any expenses have been deducted. It is the amount by which sales can decline 
before we incur a loss. Do you see the difference in what I just said? So, let's find the margin of safety in dollars and the margin of safety as a ratio. Now, I don't care if you write that down or not. In fact, I encourage you not to write it down. You saw it in Monday's lecture. This is where I lost you in Monday's lecture. Maybe because of time, but maybe because of chemistry. That looks more like chemistry than it does anything I'm trying to accomplish. You're writing it down again, aren't you? We're looking for the margin of safety. We're going to compare actual sales with sales at break even. Find me some facts. Do we know actual sales in this problem? Mm -hmm. If you know the number, raise your hand. How much? Toby? Um, is correct. Do we know sales at break even in this problem? Yes. Somebody new and different? Shane? 60,000. Therefore, the margin of safety in dollars must be some new volunteer? Yes, TJ. Say it. 21,000. 81,000 minus 60,000. The numerator of this fraction is 21,000 margin of safety in dollars. Sometimes we like to express that as a percentage. What are we going to divide by? I could divide by 81,000. I could divide by 60,000. What do you divide by? Stated in a relationship to current sales. It's a description of how much current sales can decline before you incur a loss. Divide that by 81,000. Tell me what you got. Somebody? Say it again. 26%. Sales can decline by 26% of their present level before we incur a loss. Margin of safety is another one of the related break-even formulas, decision tools, that's interesting and beneficial to know in business. If you've got a question about this, please ask. If not, I'm about to turn to another exercise. Margin of safety, is, is it in, or net income? It is not net income. It's sales-based, okay. not net income-based. Shane? If, if you own a building free and clear, uh -huh. and that is, let's just say it's your only fixed cost, at a certain point, that fixed cost is eliminated, or, or, or immediately basically eliminated for, for the purposes of this, right? Because you don't have an ongoing, like in terms of, it doesn't matter if your sales decrease because you don't have an ongoing fixed cost well, every month. the fixed cost associated with the building might be property taxes on the building, insurance on the building. You might have some, you're referring to depreciation on the building as being a fixed cost? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And if the building were paid for, or, or the mortgage, if you were thinking right. of the mortgage right. on the or building? Mortgage, yeah. Okay. Or um, rent, if you didn't own it. But. Okay, rent would be a good example, but if you own it, then you got property taxes and insurance to deal with. Who's got a question? Turn with me to exercise 22.9. Do we want to break even? Say yes or no. 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 We spend a whole lot of time learning how to do the break even point for it not to be <coughs> the best motivation or the best thing that can happen in our business. We'd rather make money. 22.9 says, our company has $150,000 of net income in 08 when the sales price per unit was $150. Variable costs were $90. Fixed costs were $570,000. Management expects per unit information and total fixed costs to remain the same the following year. The president of our company is under pressure from stockholders to increase net income by $60,000 next year. Compute the number of units that we sold this year. Could compute the number of units that would have to be sold in 09 to reach the stockholders' desired profit level. And we'll skip C for the time being. So. 
my reflex reaction is going to be to attempt to use the traditional break-even formula or some derivative of that first. If I can, I'm probably going to use that one. That's just me. I understand that one better. But because this information, questions were asked of and paragraph gave us information about, per unit information, I'm wondering if this wouldn't be the better formula for us to start with and deal with. Y'all with me here? I'm thinking, if you'll allow me, that we may just start with the per unit formula to try to solve this problem. Now, what's wrong with the formula sales equals fixed cost divided by unit contribution margin in this problem? What's this formula all about? What result it's gonna, is it going to give us? I don't mean literally. I mean conceptually. What's the name of it? What's wrong with that formula right this minute? Break even. That'll give us units at break even. What did the problem ask us to find? The actual amount It asked us to find the actual amount of units sold. Now, you've been asking me, I've been asking you, this idea of it being a top line concept or a bottom line concept, sales or net income, is partly in play here, but we've got information going on. It says A, compute the number of units sold in 08, and it gives us variable and fixed information. The unit sales price was $150, the variable cost per unit were $90, the fixed costs were $570,000. Let's start there. We know fixed costs are $570,000, yes or no? Yes. Can we figure out unit contribution margin? I think so. We sell the product for $150 each, yes or no? Yes. Variable costs per unit are $90 a unit. I think that'll do it. If I worked this out, I would get, don't work it out. It's not a number kind of answer I'm looking for. This is the same answer, the same question I asked a few minutes ago. If I worked this out, what would I get? Break even. Break even. Is that the answer to the question I'm asking? Mm -hmm. So in the same way that you saw in Monday's lecture and perhaps in today's homework problem, one of the spin-offs of break-even is this concept of target net income or building in some amount of profitability. That's what we need to do now to allow for some profit. We need fixed cost and a profit. It doesn't have to be called target net income. But we need something there to represent the fact that we made money last year or lost money last year in order to pull this off. Actually, I should have written that one here, I think. Do we know that number? Target net income or whatever profitability, did, we, did it say how much we? Mm, that's the proposal, but, but about the current facts. In 08, what did we achieve? What is it? 150,000. We made 150,000. So we made $150,000 in profit. So there's the profitability angle. Try working this. This sum on the numerator is 720. And this result on the denominator is 60. Therefore, 12,000 mumblers. 12,000 12, units were sold. Yes or no? Somebody had their hand up. Randy. Why would you subtract the net the net income of one fifty from the fit we? What are you trying to find? Uh, we're trying to find. Well, maybe that was a sassy answer. 
maybe I made the mistake for starting there. I'll show you. Now, if I'm going to do it two alternate ways, you're going to have to be open-minded enough to not just rely on some other answer and some other thought that you did. The whole purpose of, of repeating this in some other format is that somebody will understand it better this way. I said at the beginning of this, if I were doing this, I would probably use the traditional formula. The break-even formula expanded by a measure of profitability. How many units did I sell? The fallacy of doing this is this is going to give me a dollar answer. If I know the unit sales price, I should be able to divide by the unit sales price and get the units. So this isn't quite as efficient, but I think it's the answer to Brandy's question. Look, Brandy, <coughs> did I subtract target net income from fixed costs there? No. This is the formula I'm working with. So let's plug in what we know. We're looking for sales. Fixed costs were $570,000. That variable cost percentage is not given in the problem, but we could have determined it. Would you help me with this? 90, 90 divided by 150. On your calculator right in this minute? Please. More than Toby? Did you do it? 90 divided by 150 is a 60% relationship. Target net income or the amount of net income, the profitability that we're building in, was $150,000 this year. If you isolate the variable and combine like terms, you find that 40% S is equal to 720. If you solve that, how about you solve that? Today. Somebody. Uh, 1,800,000, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, yes. $1.8 million is the amount of sales in the current year when net income was $150,000, which is almost the answer to the question they ask us, but not quite. The question was, how many units did they sell? We can convert this to units, Brandy, how? Divide 1.8 million by $150, the sales price per unit, and get the same 12,000 units that we got a minute ago. Pick your method, whichever you're most comfortable with. Approach it however you'd like. Now, I like these kinds of problems, problem solving kinds of things, to use the tools that we're trying to give you break even and it's related formulas to try to do things like this because they're real life realistic. And the president of the company is under pressure from stockholders to increase net income by 60. We can start here first. We can go there first. Let's start here. Target net income was 150000 We want it to be 60000 more than that. B. Compute the number of units that would have to be sold to reach the stockholder's desired profit level. Then all we need to do is add 60,000 to the 150 and get 210,000 and go through the steps again. Jeff? It would be easier just to. Do, 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 do. So. Two choices here. I did that one a minute ago and confused somebody. Because it's in units, I would have gone there first. I decided I'd go here first, and we're going to do that in a second. All right. So, I select the variable combined like terms. 40% S is equal to 780,000. 780,000 divided by 0.4 is, who's got it? Didn't hear you. It is not. 780,000 divided by 0.4 is, it is not. 1,950,000? 1,950,000 of oh, sales would be required. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I like you ahead of me, but you got to be with me too. $1.95 million of revenue needs to be earned to earn $210,000 of net profit. That's close to the answer the book asks us, but it's not the answer. The book asks how many units had to be sold. 
convert that to units, Toby. Divide by 150, so we get Divide this by 150 and get 13,000 units. I've got to sell 1,000 units more next year than this year to achieve $60,000 more in profit. Is anybody with me right this minute? Yes. Yes? Good? Yes? Yes. Let's do it this other way real quickly by popular request. So instead of being 150,000 right there, we could change this to 210. 570 plus 210 is 780. 780. 780 divided by 60. Is this still going to be true? 780 divided by 60 is 13. Did you really do it or did you read that answer off the screen? I did. Thank you. Jeff, that was so easy. You like that? Mm -hmm. See, he's really good. See, he's really good. See, he's real, real good. Have a nice day. <laughs> what?